I work in a, a new area in robotics that is called soft robotics. It's been uh, in development for the last 10 years. And the main goal of soft robotics is to develop new and better hardware for robotics. Most of the state of the art in robotics right now uh, has improved in performance regarding uh, controls, software. But if you look at the hardware that robots currently use, it's the same type of hardware that we have been using for the last 50 years. That limits the functionality of robots. So one of the main drivers of soft robotics, which combines the use of materials, chemistry, and advanced fabrication, is exactly that, to advance the state of the art of functionality in hardware for robotics. So for example, in uh, traditional robotics, we normally design individual components and then we assemble them. In soft robotics, one of the major advantages is that we can co-fabricate an entire system. For example, this uh, soft finger for a soft gripper has an internal structure that is made of a stiffer material, has a, a skin wrapped around it. In the top surface, we have a, fl a flex sensor. All these can be fabricated in one go with our 3D printers, right? This is a, a robot that mimics a, a stingray. Like they have hundreds of little bony structures that are called lepidotrichia. And of course, if you were to build a robot to replicate exactly that, it would be a very complex robot. Instead, what we do is we only have one actuator per fin, but we tailor uh, make the rest of the fin to have the right material distributions so that it will oscillate mimicking the motions of a real stingray fin. The challenge is that the material properties of, of, of these structures again are non-linear and time dependent so traditional modeling approaches don't work very well so we need to often resort to uh, uh, data analytics of, or machine learning, for example, to have a more accurate set of models. The challenges of, of modeling also affect fabrication. Uh, all of the fabrication done in the lab is, again, uh, built in-house. We make our own printers because printers that are capable of handling this range of materials are not available uh, commercially now. We have many industrial applications that cannot be tackled by traditional robotics because the hardware is not capable of, of, uh, of performing under those environments or under the requirements of, of the task. For example, logistics, right? Nowadays, uh, people order everything online. Here in Singapore, Red Mart, and people order uh, a high mix of items. Your order can have some cereal, fruit, vegetables, rice, etc. Soft grippers, for example, are ideal for this type of applications because they can handle this high a mixed low volume set of items. Another area where we can use soft robotics is in uh, manual operations in harsh environments. These are tasks where humans have to do repetitive, uh, dangerous tasks that require high dexterity. One area that we still haven't explored but we are really keen on moving to is uh, the use of soft robotics in wearables, in particular for the elderly population here in Singapore. Uh, soft robots, unlike traditional robots, are inherently safe to be used around uh, humans. Right? So this lends to ideal uh, applications where we have, for example, wearables that can be used for therapeutic applications, for example, for joint care uh, or posture care. They can also be used in uh, therapy at home to alleviate some of the loads in, in hospitals. It's, it's an area that has many interesting, challenging research questions to be solved, but also that we see as having very good potential, in particular here in, in Singapore.